Can mask wearing cause your oxygen levels to drop? A recent study helps answer that question. Also, how early was COVID-19 spreading in a major U.S. city before the first case was diagnosed? Dr. Frank McGeorge here with a new study suggesting a significant number of people with COVID-19 look more like someone with a stomach bug. Interesting, uh, that part too. Let's get to all that with Frank. Doc? Yeah, Devin and Kim. So COVID-19, of course, usually looks like an upper respiratory infection with a cough and fever. But Canadian researchers who reviewed 36 articles looking primarily for CAT scan and ultrasound findings with COVID-19, well, they uncovered something interesting, common intestinal complaints. The paper published in the Journal of Abdominal Radiology found 18% of COVID-19 patients presented with gastrointestinal symptoms, including loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Furthermore, their review found 16% of COVID patients only had intestinal symptoms. Now, mask use has become standard to curb COVID spread, but that's led many people to question whether masks could cause harm. One common question has been whether they might prevent someone from getting enough oxygen. So one group of Canadian researchers did a simple experiment to see. The results were published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. They recruited 25 people over 65 years old to measure their oxygen saturations with a portable pulse oximeter with and without a three-layer mask while they went about their normal daily activities. The average oxygen saturation was 96% before, during, and after face mask use. The authors concluded that wearing a three-layer non-medical face mask was not associated with a decline in oxygen saturation in older participants. Now, finally, a new study published in the journal Nature using more than 10,000 plasma samples collected in New York City between February and July of this year found, based on the presence of antibodies to the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it was spreading and circulating as early as mid-February, well before the first documented case on March 1st. Now, the researchers in that study were also able to determine that by July, Roughly 20% of all New Yorkers had antibodies to the virus, which is much higher than other regions like ours in Detroit, for example, where an earlier study found only about 7% of frontline workers in our area had antibodies. That's a massive difference. Frank, we had uh, previously talked about some of the problems with the antibody tests and how accurate those are. How would that impact these results? Well, important point, you know, at this point, antibody testing still should not be used on an individual level to tell if a person is immune. But on a larger population level, it does give a good indication of a past exposure. And in this setting for epidemiologic purposes and basically logging prior exposures, it's actually a really useful test. And those results are strong. Yes, yeah, it says, says more about a group than it does the individual with the test, which kind of leaves them uh, still not exactly knowing mm -hmm. what they want to find out. Yeah. All right, Doc.